Hey guys, it's quote unquote your boy, Ballface8020, back again with another great response video. So, we're back in the office with Uncle Z, and he made a video that's not that bad. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is the best Casey video ever made. That's kind of damning with faint praise, though. Um, it's not, I wouldn't even say it's good. But it approaches being like having some marginally useful <laughs> stuff in it. Um, I mean, it does. It does. He so it's it's weird. It's it's it's. it's uh, I mean, it's Casey. So I, I can't. I know I watched it last night. I can't can't remember if it, if there's if there is a lot of harmful bullshit in it like usual. But um, this one is uh, this one is interesting. So, um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, not particularly interesting, but it's interesting to see Casey see something, uh, say something kind of, uh, practical and useful for a change. You know, there's a video that he has with Cole where Casey is clearly hung over and he is being such a dick. And, you know, my mom, I might've even mentioned this before. My mom once told me that, um, there's no such thing as somebody who becomes a, like a jerk or a bad person when they're drunk. Uh, if you become neat and nasty when you're drunk, it's because you were always a bad person and being drunk just revealed the person you really are underneath. And um, I have a feeling that Casey is a very nasty drunk after seeing that hungover video because it's, you know, he was being way more aggressive than he normally is. And he, to the point where he like seemed like he kind of had to correct himself midway through the video being like, Oh shit, I can't, I can't act like this on camera. Um, so check it out if you're interested. Okay. So we're actually going to start off though on a negative note with the video itself because he, so he's talking about staying present in the moment and becoming high value. Now just ignore the high value thing. because Obviously that's problematic right there. Um, but my, my main problem is the mainly this video is going to be about how, about how to be present in the moment. Um, and, uh, it's the powerful secrets thing that I don't like. I, I know he's trying to do marketing sales stuff and this kind of stuff, but first of all, I don't even like it from a marketing standpoint. It's too gimmicky sounding. It's too gimmicky, too cliche, but, um, just in, you know, in life in general, there really are no secrets. Um, you know, it's all, it's all out there, you know, it's all, I mean, it's especially now with the internet, the information's it's all available and it's all free. There are, there are no secrets. I'm not saying there's not wisdom out there. There's there, but it's there to be found. It's not secret. Um, so I mean, maybe some stuff isn't super widely known. Maybe some stuff is misunderstood, but there are no secrets. So, all right, let's hear what Casey has to say question from a subscriber and this one really stood out to me because the title was problems with staying present in the moment and this is something that me myself i've struggled with from time to time i know for sure this is probably something that you struggled with and i'm gonna let you know a little secret every person on planet earth right now is going to be struggling with staying present and staying motivated and actually focusing on task at hand without letting their mind drift so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be breaking down his i think that Staying present and staying motivated are completely unrelated. Email, giving some rock solid guidance so that way you can take these systems I use, you can copy paste this into your life and you can actually get right down to business. So let's dive in. We'll leave his name anonymous. He goes, hey, Casey, what advice do you have to give to someone to stay present and really focus on what they're currently doing? He says, I'm really stressed out as of lately because I can't seem to stay present. My mind always drifts to the shit that I've been through in the past and also drifts to the future as a means to escape the present. I'm definitely not living the life I want to live yet, so constantly thinking about how it'll be when it's all said and done. I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to stop because I think that it's affecting my motivation. Based on all this, what do you think is the best way to move? So, great question. I'm going to bring... It is a, it is a good question. Um, hmm... It is a good question, but I think, uh, you know what, let's let Casey get, have a shot at it first, and then I can offer my two cents. Break this down line by line and explain this. 
So the first piece here, what advice do you have to give to someone who is staying present and really focus on the things that they are doing currently? Well, the very first thing that I recommend you doing and that will help is number one, look at the tasks that you have throughout the day and remove all distraction. Okay, one of the things I've had to do as of recently is I've had to take my cell phone while I'm working, lock it in a bedroom and not look at it. And one of the biggest reasons why most men are low value or low status, they don't make the type of wealth they want to make, they can't stay dedicated, they can't stay focused, is strictly because they have too many distractions. You see, the best way to get present is not by focusing harder, it's not by trying to focus more, it's by actually removing distraction. Remo yeah, um, I, I want to give Casey at least partial credit for this one. Um, I think what he, what he, first of all, what Casey said there about not just, you know, focusing harder is 100% right. So I'm going to give him credit for that. Uh, as for the whole, like, remove your phone, I think Casey said he, like, locks his phone in a cabinet or something while he's working. Um, yeah, that, that could be a helpful tool. I'm not sure that by itself or things like that are really going to work. I, th I think, and maybe I've spoken about this before, you need to understand something regarding focus. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this, but in the mid, the mid, the mid tens, the mid 2010s, there was this big mindfulness movement. Uh, I know I've talked about it before. The, main, the its biggest proponent was John Kabat-Zinn. Excuse me one second. And, um, you know, I uh, went to, you know, they there was a program that John Kabat-Zinn promoted that or had called uh, MBSR for Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction. I myself went to an MBSR course when I was studying computer programming and I was under a tremendous amount of stress. Um, and there they taught me a meditation technique that really did help with stress. However, there was some things about MBSR that I think were very harmful. And one of the reasons that I think it kind of died out, I mean, it still exists, but the philosophy is very you know, be mindful, be present in the moment. Okay. So they would do stuff like, basically they would say like, if you're walking, just be walking as opposed to like you, you know, us, you know, you're out walking to the store or whatever. You're not thinking about your walk to the store. You're thinking about a million things, your, your past, your future, what's going on. You might even be thinking about philosophical stuff. Who knows? You can be thinking about anything. Whatever you're thinking about, though, it's not what you're actually doing. And imagine like you're washing the dishes or something. Are you thinking about washing the dishes? No, because it's fucking boring. You're thinking about something else. Your mind is drifting. So what MBSR really promoted was what Casey just said to avoid, um, the whole like try to force the focus. Um and NBSR would say, oh, no, no, you're gentle about it. You're gently returning your mind to the task of washing the dishes or, um, you know, just the one foot stepping or the other foot's picking up while you're walking or something like that. Or your hand gripping out to open the door or something like that. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, I never had a tremendous amount of success with it. I don't think most people have. I mean, again, like I said, the the one formal meditation technique they taught me did help me at various times deal with stress, but I never really had much success with that whole like, you know, one foot's up, one foot's down, you know, you're constantly focusing on like, okay, I'm washing the dishes or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, because it, it just, it just doesn't work. I mean, I mean, there might be some people out there who it's work or helpful. I can't imagine how, but maybe for some people it has, but if I think for most people, it just does, it doesn't work because, because what you're trying to do ultimately is for, is force your attention. It's like, okay, yeah. So you're, you're, you're walking, whatever. So you're going to force your attention on that. And it's like, no, that's, that's not, that, that, that doesn't work. And the thing to understand about the mind is focus, focus and 
concentrated, that is the natural state of the human mind. Your mind is naturally focused and concentrated. If you are not focused and not concentrated, it's because something has disturbed the tranquility of your mind. That's the only reason it could happen. Okay. So it wouldn't be like, so focusing isn't a matter of doing anything. Focusing your mind is not a matter of doing anything. It's not a matter of, you know, just grit, closing your eyes and concentrating really hard on an image or a concept or a number or anything. No, what's, what's, uh, it's, that's, that's, that, that's not going to help you focus. It's not going to work. And that's not what focus is about. Focus is about removing the stimuli that are causing your mind to be chaotic, to be all over the place. And, um, you know, I think Casey's getting a little bit there with he's saying remove, remove distractions. Um, and again, as a tool during the day, you know, locking your phone in a cabinet. Yeah. I mean that, that might be helpful, but that's not going to take it all the way either. The thing is, if your mind is not focused, um, the, I mean, there, there are numerous things you can do, but I, I don't really want to go into, to all of those things right now, at least at this stage of the video. What I do want to do though, is properly diagnose the problem, like including the, the problem of this guy writing in, like, you know, um, what is disturbing his mind? I couldn't tell you, you know, what is like, what, what why is his mind? If he's not, if your mind is not focusing, your, your mind is not at peace, period. You may be perfectly happy. You, I'm not saying you're mentally ill, but your mind is not at peace. Because if you were at mind was at peace, your mind would be focused. Full stop. End of discussion. And um, so, what, what he needs to do is, like I said before, remove this this stimuli that is disturbing his mind. And maybe we can maybe we can talk about that further in the video. Um, but again, as a as a technique, um, locking the phone, stuff like that. Again, those can maybe help a little bit at the margins, but it, it, it shows a kind of misdiagnosis of the problem. Whereas I think Casey was kind of getting there at the beginning to, to just say, like, locking your phone away. It, again, I think you're kind of getting away from it then because um, you're trying to force it in that sense. You know, it's like you're, you're going to structure this to, like, sort of force the con conversation. And it shows to me, like, a kind of misunderstanding of where the issue is. The truth is it shouldn't matter where your phone is. It could be right next to you. It makes no fucking difference because if your mind is focused – it's not going to, what if the phone going off is just going to be kind of like, oh, huh, okay, back to work. All right, let's continue. Remove the chaos and the noise from your life. And the more quiet you can start to get your inner peace, the easier it's going to be to focus. So here's a. Well, that, yeah, that, that, that's what I was getting at. I may, maybe Casey was trying to say the same thing. I think what Casey is trying to say is you're going to, I can't really tell with Casey, but I think he's trying to say, you calm down the other stuff in your life and your mind will settle down and, and be focused naturally, I think. Here's a couple ways to do that. Number one, remove any music or background noise that might be going on in your house. Number two, put away your phone and lock it when you don't need it, right? Get it out of there. Be able to actually look down at your work at task at hand and focus. Another thing that, another thing that will help immensely with this that I've noticed. Okay. So basically he said, he's saying avoid music and don't have your, basically, I think what he's trying to say there, and I'm not certain is don't have music playing while you're working and don't have your phone when you, when you're working. I think that's what he's, what he's trying to say. I'm not positive that he's saying you shouldn't use those things period, or you shouldn't use them while you're working. But here's, here, here's the, um, the truth. The, uh, the, if the goal is to maximize focus, which comes from, remember what, what, well, where does focus come from? Focus comes from a still mind, period, period. There is nothing else to focus besides that. Um, if the goal is to maximize focus beyond the obvious things like checking for like some kind of psychological disorder or, um, like clinical ADD, stuff like that. Um, 
you aren't going to do want to do anything that agitates the mind whether it's what you're working or not working that is not relevant that is a that is that is a non-issue um you don't want to be listening to music ever you don't want to be you know texting on the phone or surfing the web on your phone ever not just while you're working when you have to do other stuff ever now i want to be clear i am not telling you not to listen to music or not to use the phone. I'm not saying that because contrary to what Buddhists will tell you and probably some Stoics too, there is nothing wrong with sensual pleasure um, or, or, you know, distraction for lack of a better word. There's absolutely nothing wrong with those things. Um, anything. Um, now there could be something wrong with a given sense. Like for instance, if, if one of the, if one thing that gives you pleasure is like, murdering people, then that particular pleasure, there's something wrong with that. But pleasure in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. It includes something like, so something like, because a Buddhist would say listening to music is a bad thing because it's going, like, because listening to music is going to, um, it's a, it's, it's a stimulus in your mind, which is going to create distraction, um, which could, you know, distraction, delusion. And it's going to anything anything that unsettles the mind is negative, and Buddhism is wrong about that. That it, there's that, that it's you know there's nothing wrong with enjoying the good things in life. However, just because we recognize that there's nothing morally wrong with them, does not mean that we ignore the thing that Buddhists are just objectively correct about, which is those things will disturb, uh, will unsettle the mind, and will reduce concentration and focus. Cannot be avoided. It's simply a fact. So if the goal is for whatever reason, whether it be permanent or whether it be some sort of temporary thing to get something done on a project, you want to minimize all distractions, not just while you're working, but throughout the rest of the time either. If the goal is to develop maximum mental clarity, and um, one thing you would do is you would not not listen to music at all. You would not text at all, except maybe would maybe when you absolutely had to for emergencies. You would completely minimize your your communication with other human beings. Ideally, you would cut it to zero. You would never communicate with anybody. But um, you know, obviously, for practical purposes, you might not be able to do that. So you're going to keep it to a bare minimum. You know, you're talking any communication with with other people. Um, anything you're doing besides what it is you want to be focusing on, you know, um, and I've talked about this before. So let's say you're trying to build a business because that's a lot of, you know, Casey's accolades. They're, they're, they, maybe they've got a couple of goals. They're trying to become high value. So they're focusing on, um, maybe building themselves up physically and like, you know, bodybuilding and working on their business. Then that should be it that should be what the life is. You know, you're, you're, you know, you're eating, sleeping, going to the gym, and then, uh, you're working on your business. Now you can't, there's going to be times during the day where you can't be doing that stuff. There's a, there, you're going to need breaks. You're going to need time for you. But when you have a break, you don't watch TV, you don't surf the web, you don't text with your friends. You literally just sit there. You sit there and you do nothing. You don't read, you don't play games, you do nothing. You just sit there. And, you know, initially it's going to be ultra unpleasant. And I'm not recommending this. You know, I'm really not. If anything, I'm recommending you don't do this. But I'm just trying to talk about what you need to do to develop focus. I do want you to understand that developing focus is something you can do. And it's really just a matter of sense restraint. It's not a matter of meditation techniques. It's not a matter of willing yourself to concentrate more. It's all a matter of, you know, detaching from, withdrawing from, uh, withdrawing yourself from sensuality. And then the, the, uh, the clarity uh, and concentration will follow. Notice is removing caffeine, okay? Yeah, phenomenal advice. Caffeine and I would say chocolate, chocolate as well. Uh, again, this is this isn't. I'm not advising you to do this. I eat a lot of like a lot of chocolate, 
and I consume caffeine from time to time. I'm not, not like super crazy about it, but I consume it from time to time. Um, I don't I don't, I don't like coffee. The, uh, well, I like coffee, but not enough for, for how jittery it makes me. Um, yeah, caffeine makes a huge difference. And then, you know, they'll say stuff like, oh, well, you know, just don't drink it before bed. It stays in your system too. It, it doesn't matter if you drink it first thing in the morning. I mean, it might not have as big an impact, but the truth is, I mean, some people just don't respond to caffeine, in which case go ahead, drink as much of it as you want. But caffeine and chocolate, again, chocolate has caffeine. Um, if you're super sensitive to it or even medium sensitivity to it, really consuming any amount of it's going to have an effect. Um, and to the point where, like I said, you have it first thing in the morning, unfortunately it probably will have some impact on your sleep quality. And, um, which further uh, affects your concentration. And like for me, the antidepressants I'm on, caffeine does not interact well with the antidepressants I'm on. So, you know, caffeine, it, create, it makes you anxious, it makes you jittery. And then some people just get used to it and, you know, it ends up not being a huge deal. And that's kind of how I feel, which is why I continue to consume it. Um, in fact, like when I give caffeine up, I'll feel dramatically better for a few days. And then I kind of get used to the new feeling. And when I start using it again, I'll feel dramatically worse for a few days and get used to that. So it's not like night and day. And it does seem like your body seems to either adjust to having it or to not having it. Um, like I said, again, it depends on how sensitive you are to it. But if it's something you, if you're trying to increase focus, absolutely. I would say quick caffeine. Now, again, some people it just won't impact because they're, they're not caffeine sensitive. However, in my experience, those people tend to not really have a problem with concentration anyway. So I would say, I mean, that's, so for them, this whole conversation may sort of be moot. But if you are somebody who does struggle with concentration, you're probably somebody who's going to be, who doesn't respond that well to caffeine or is somebody who's very sensitive to caffeine. And um, it's going to be making your symptoms a lot worse. Um anything because when we talk about a mind not being at peace or a mind being disturbed it, it doesn't necessarily have to be something mental or spiritual it can be something physical you know it can be a purely physical neurological process um like attention deficit disorder or and caffeine is essentially giving yourself attention deficit disorder or anxiety or even depression so yes i agree with casey on this one when you have caffeine in you, and I've noticed this because I've been a coffee drinker my whole life, not only are you shaky, not only does it heighten anxiety, not only does it speed up blood pressure and kind of raise anxiety and speed up your heart rate, but you got to look at it like this. If you need stimulants to get you going, and it's hard for me to say this, like I'm, I'm having to swallow my own like pride when I say this because I love coffee. You have to understand how hard this is for me to say. When you are constantly reliant on something for your own productivity, it actually makes you weak and it makes you a slave to the things that you are actually reliant on. And you're not strong as is. All of a sudden, you're dependent on these things. You're dependent on checking your phone to feel a sense of security. You're dependent on that cup of coffee or that Red Bull energy to get you through the day. It makes you a weak will. Well, I don't think I don't think that there's any any connection between the, the caffeine or the. I mean, they're both addictions, but. You can't compare a psychological addiction like checking your phone to caffeine. I mean, it, it, it's a completely different type of addiction with a completely different type of symptom, I guess, or, or you know, results. Um, you know, so I don't, I, uh, I completely disagree. I completely disagree with you know any him trying to draw some sort of uh, connection between the two. Well, the individual. Okay, that's number one. Let's keep going. He says, I'm really stressed out as of lately because I can't seem to stay in the present. My mind always drifts to the shit that I've been through in the past and also drifts to the future as a means to escape the present. Okay, if that's happening, the work you're doing in the present has to actually be meaningful. No, I, I completely disagree because, and I think honestly, and I'm not trying to be a smart ass here, but Casey himself is an example that doesn't. I mean, Casey's work is about as unmeaningful as it gets. I mean, what is he? He sells snake oil to to desperate guys. That that there's no meaning in that. But Casey is able to find meaning in it. So at most, you would say 
it has to be something that you can at least con yourself into believing is meaningful. But I don't even think that's true. Again, if your mind is at peace, you will naturally be focused on whatever it is you're doing, even if you're not motivated. Like I'm saying, like, if your mind is at peace, when you go out, to, when you when you wash the dishes, when you go out to water the lawn, you're just going to find because I know I know because I've been in these states. OK, I, I've never been able to maintain them, but I have been in these states. You, you don't have and when you're in these mindful, focused states, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to focus on anything. You just naturally will be focused on whatever you're doing. And it doesn't require any motivation. It's just it's just automatic. It has to impact people's lives. It has to impact your life. It has No, no, it doesn't. It has to be for the betterment of a specific reason. One of the quickest ways to let your mind wander is to do stuff that bores you and to do stuff that you don't care about. Hmm. No, no, you're not getting it. You don't get it. Yeah, Casey, Casey, no. You, you start with somebody, you don't, it doesn't matter if you're, if it's boring you. That's, that's irrelevant. Okay. You, you don't have to be entertained. That's, that's the whole problem is that you, you made, if, if that's the issue that you need to be entertained or, or engaged with what you're doing, your mind is not at peace because your mind is saying, I need, is saying, stimulate me energize me. And you're using that to keep it focused. You know, you're like essentially bribing your mind, like, so like a wild animal and you're bribing it to do what you want. It's not just doing what you want it to automatically. And you, you, that's not how you train the mind. You train the mind by calming it down and then it'll do, and then it will be pliable and do what you want it to. Okay. At least to a point, at least to a point. Most people who are working dead in nine to five jobs, they have no purpose. They have no ability to stay focused. It's no wonder they can't stay present in the moment. They don't care about the things that they're actually doing. No, they I mean, no, but they would be. What are those people doing when they get home? Those people who are doing jobs that they don't give a shit about, what are they doing when they go at home? They're going home, turning on the TV, you know, maybe eating some junk food, you know, dealing with family drama, with friends drama and stuff. And they could genuinely be enjoying life. I'm not saying they have bad lives, but I'm saying that that's what their minds are in a constant state of stimulation. So then you put them in that job where that they're just doing to make ends meet. Of course, they're going to be bored. You've just withdrawn a whole bunch of stimulus from their mind. And you've said, okay, now look at these spreadsheets. Of course, the mind's going to rebel. The mind's going to be, the mind is essentially in stimulus withdrawal. So it's going like, what the fuck? And it's going all over the place. You know, you're, you're in mental withdrawal all the time. Instead of like, imagine the physical withdrawal your body feels from caffeine. This is a hundred times worse, except it's mental with, it's, now it's, with your, you're doing it to, not to your body, but to your mind. So, I mean, like, you know, Casey obviously doesn't, I mean, he, he's, he's, what he's right, you know, the, the caffeine, there is withdrawal symptoms on your body to the point where it can affect your, your brain and your mind. But that's how, that's how, what that would, like, again, like I said, what caffeine is to your body or what any type of addictive drug is to your body, that's what stimulus or sensory, uh, sensory pleasure or even just sensory engagement is to your mind. Hmm. So that's what you do. Get, get rid of that and the mind will calm down. Just like your body will calm down when you get rid of the caffeine. That's it. You've already explained it, Casey. You, were, you're, you got halfway there. The second you care about the things that you're doing, the second you enjoy the things that you're doing, the second you find meaning in the things that you're doing, is all of a, is all of a sudden the second you can be present in the moment. And no, I just don't think that's necessarily true because there's been stuff that like, you know, I um, care about. And I can't stay focused on it because my mind is all over the place. And I know I'm not the only person who's had this happen. There, there's, there's a lot of people who just really have a problem with focus. And it's because of stuff like I mentioned earlier in the video. Their, mind, their minds just aren't there. You know, the, uh, there's, no focus and there, there's no focus and there's no mental energy. And of course, you know why there's no mental energy? It's because my mind's going haywire all the time. So it doesn't have the energy to focus on the stuff that I want it to. And that's where, you know, people like uh, this kid who's writing Casey are at. Do things you want to do. 
And if you're not there yet with that income, what I recommend you doing is I recommend you starting to work towards that and find different ways to escape, find ways to break out of that slave trap that you're in. So that way you can hone in on that ambition. You can hone in on that purpose. And all of a sudden you, it's, it's easy for you to stay present in the moment because you like who you are and what you're doing right then and there. Okay. Let's keep going. That's, that, that's not going to keep you present in the moment. I'm sorry. That's not at all. No, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And I know Casey's been successful. I know there's other guys who have been successful doing this. Yes, because they have the ability, Brian, from engaging their minds to be able to focus on a task that they're interested in. Now, I can't do that. I can't focus on, like, if it, if it requires a lot of effort, I just can't maintain my focus, at least not day in and day out. Um, but some guys like Casey, like other guys, probably guys like Bill Gates, like Donald Trump even, um, at least well, maybe Trump to a lesser extent, they can do it. Um, but there's a limit, you know, you're not going to, and you're going to have, you're going to find yourself much more prone to burnout if that's the way you do it. And a guy like the guy writing Casey, never going to work that way. He's case. He is not wired the way you are, Casey. You're giving him advice that would work for you, but it's not going to work for him. Going. He says, I'm definitely not living the life that I want to live yet. So constantly thinking about how it will all be when it's said and done. I'm trying to stop because I think it's affecting my motivation. Based on this, what do you think is the best way to move? So the, motiva- the motivation is not an issue. Don't worry. Don't worry about the motivation. The um, th- that's that's not an issue. I mean, look, you're motivated enough that you that you still want to do it, that you were motivated enough that you are paying to subscribe to Casey and that you wrote into him. So don't, don't, don't worry about that. It's not the lack of motivation that's holding you back. Okay. What's holding you back is a lack of energy and a lack of focus. And you're going to, that needs to be true. Those things need to be treated a specific way. Motivation is such a meme. Okay. You don't need to, you don't need to treat motivation. If, if you, if, if motivation really wasn't there, you wouldn't be asking any questions because you wouldn't care. You know, <laughs> so if you care, if you care enough to care, then the, you have enough motivation and it's not something you need to worry about. And even discussing it is a, is a distraction. So, dude, right off the rip, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get active and engaged in activities where your mind can let go and be present in the moment. Oftentimes, the reason why people don't find meaning in their work that they're doing, why people don't find meaning in their day-to-day life is because they're genuinely not living the way that they want to live. You have to understand this. If you look at other people and they have a life or a lifestyle as to something that looks extremely well, something that you want, something that you aspire to have, maybe a dream dream relationship, maybe the dream income, dream whatever, dream living location. I don't care what it is. You have to ask yourself and say, hey, if they did it, so could I. And how can I reverse engineer every day of my life so I am working towards what I want to become because you're going to have to make yourself who you want to be. And the only way to do that is you have to be present in the moment because most things that take work is going to take focus. But like I said at the beginning of this, the only way to actually stay focused is by getting present in the moment, by zoning in on the things you need. Dude, Casey, you didn't, you didn't, you just said nothing for like the last 30 seconds straight. You know, he knows that he needs to stay present. That's he's the one who brought it up. So, I mean, I'm sorry that there's, there's, that's, that's all the Casey I can take for the day. This video is actually pretty bad. I thought, I remember it being a little bit better. I guess I, he, I give him credit for the caffeine thing and I give him credit for like saying to not try to just focus harder. But his advice was basically is just, well, if you're not focused, it's because you're not engaged. So find something that's more engaging to you. But it's like, no, 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 you don't get it. You fucking moron. He's, he's finding the process of the self-improvement you preach to be unengaging, okay? Not everybody's wired the same way you are, Casey. And so you just, <laughs> yeah, of, co- of course, you know, this is, you know, this is a problem with coaching. You know, one of the problems with coaching is you're always going to be somebody, you're, you know, the coach is always going to be, you know, defaulting to coaching somebody who's like them. Like, like everything Casey or Joe Descartes or Kevin, those things, those guys are all trying to coach guys who are like what I would say to me, to how I would coach uh, the version of me that existed 10 years ago, you know? And it's like they, they just have no understanding that 
that they, they they're blind to the advantages that they themselves have and had and stuff like that. All right. That's all for now. And I'll see you guys in the next.